Well, welcome back. It is time for our very first hot topic, and we'll be taking a look at uh, fuel subsidy uh, removal, which has taken center stage in the country as we speak. A harness nest was stirred when President Tunubu Bola uh, made his inaugural pronouncement about subsidy on May 29th. That shut up the cost of pump price of fuel at fuel stations. Most filling stations shut down, and those who were opened increased the prices from 185 naira a liter to 500 naira a liter, 510 naira a liter, depending on the fuel station. And then NNPC, NNPCL, also increased the cost of fuel at the filling station, and Nigerians are wondering why. Well, NN, uh, NLC attended a meeting with government representatives and key stakeholders in that sector, and we have been joined this morning by Amechi Asuguni, former deputy president, NLC, and industrial relations expert. You're welcome, Mr. Asuguni. Hello, Mr. Asegune. Can, Can you hear, hear us? us? I'm with you. Okay. All right. Well, um, the N uh, NNPC have given what they describe, what you describe as vexatious fuel pricing template, and you have asked them to withdraw that template immediately. So bring us up to speed uh, with what happened at the meeting and the latest developments with this template. I think uh, what we are having in Nigeria now is uh, a misapplication of uh, strategy. Uh, NSC, from what we are we have, they are not against removal of first subsidy, but they are against removing subsidy and still maintain importation of PMS. It means Nigeria will suffer for the policy. It means that even the money they want to save, we don't know where they will invest it. It means government is not ready, neither willing to activate the refineries in Nigeria. So the request of NSC, even organized labor, has been consistent. And it means that let refinery works, then you remove subsidy. But the essence of subsidy was because this product were not locally refined, making the price higher. And government took this responsibility of subsidizing price to defy effect on Nigerians. So when you say you want to remove subsidy, what comes to Nigerians, what comes to mind is you have actually solved the problem of refining here in Nigeria. Unfortunately, no refinery is in action. So upon what basis would, would subsidy be removed? On the basis that Nigerians should suffer? on the basis that we have done what is required of us as government, or depending on Dangote private refinery, how come you deregulate and they say you still go back to regulate price? You say you have deregulated, you no longer have subsidy, markets should determine their price, then how come you now have a template upon which a state and zone should sell their product? When you, when you deregulate, you don't have control in the market. So what, what we are saying is, if you are if you are involved, then you must take responsibility. Let refine because there is no action plan so far rolled out by federal government to tell us that yes, we are removing subsidy because Kaduna, Wari, Potako refineries have been fixed and they are to give Nigeria a certain quantity of production, and then side by side with the Dangote refinery and then license other competitors who will make the price clash. You don't just remove. Refinery remove subsidy and then make Nigeria assume that very soon it will crash. Refineries is not something you build in six months. It's not like the communication facilitator where you, you put facilities and devices together to generate network. This is a complete construction that may take years for and, uh, and, and this fund based fund based operation. So we are saying federal government seems not ready for the action they've taken. Uh, very interesting there. Uh, subsidy has been removed, whether we like it or not, it has been removed. But um, I was wondering if you have the information as to who actually was talking for the federal government. We know 
who represented uh, NLC. We know who represented TUC. Uh, but we also know the person who was talking for the federal government said he is not appointed by the federal government. Perhaps he was just asked to do that job for the federal government. So if you have this information, who were the people actually talking for the federal government in that meeting that NLC and TUC held with the federal government? Uh, for obvious reasons as well, we don't want to talk about delegation of government. We know you can choose to work with consultants. You can choose to hire anybody to do your job. All we want is representation is more or less of less business to us. The substance before the meeting is what should command our attention. So we're, we're, you can see it's a new government less than one week. And therefore, everybody knows they've not appointed their cabinet. So they can hire personnel within the country to do their job. Ours is we address them as federal government. Okay, after the, after the meeting, um, whatever came up in the meeting, another person spoke who didn't speak at the meeting. That is the uh, group managing director of the NN, uh, NNPCL, the, the chief of NNPCL, as it is, Melikiari. He said that the federal government has said, or he said, President uh, Tinubu will build, will finish building uh, one refinery before December. Uh, is that one of the things that NLC is asking for? And uh, do you think there are things on ground to make Nigerians believe that this will happen? Honestly, the activity so far is not reflecting reality. I agree. It's a, a comment made by federal government with regards to timeline for completing a refinery by December. That also shows what NSC is advocating, that the readiness is not sufficient. Because what are we now saying? If you have said that by December, you are removing subsidy, because by then refineries will kickstart. Nigerians will be getting ready to possibly uh, work with the time. But whereby you say because budget provision was not made uh, for July onward, and therefore subsidy is gone. He, 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 he came as shock, not just shock. People are trying to analyze it. The intention for me is good because nobody will advocate to retain subsidy with the, on, the, on the ground that few of Nigerians will be, will be more or less making money that they don't need. It's a scam. It's, it's criminal, not just scam. It's criminal. But the question is, for you to remove that which is criminal, you must also put a legitimate template that will not suffer Nigeria. So we are not against refinery working by December, but we are asking what happened between now and then. And can one refinery address the challenge of first subsidy remover? I think we should do more of engagement. NSC, TUC, they are ready for engagement, and I think they were already talking. And uh, I expected this meeting has been ongoing for more than almost two years now. Engagement with uh, organized labor on solution to first subsidy removal has been ongoing, even from our previous administration. And uh, this matter has been that if you can push in the effect by making refineries work, we don't want any other palliative measure. Because palliative measures that you're even referring to, we also enrich the few. Palliative measures that are the criteria to to, to, to even disburse those funds, we eventually go to the hand of few. What we want is what should be physical to serve the entire country. And that is refinery. And I think the request of NSC is very, very reasonable. And if government will show cause on how they will achieve this refinery to function, I believe NSC and TUC will eventually agree with government plan. Well, clearly, uh, just like most Nigerians, the NLC, the TUC do not have a clear picture of the implementation of uh, the subsidy removal and palliatives by this government and the status of the $800 million borrowed by the Buhari's administration for palliatives. You have said that the only palliative you want is to see the refineries working. Well, that will not happen today, tomorrow. Uh, be, be, between now and when that refinery should work, what should Nigerians be hoping? What will the NLC be pushing for? 
to happen between now yes. and then because this palliative has been removed and Nigerians, I mean, the subsidy has been removed and Nigerians are bearing the brunt right now as we speak. This, this is not the first time federal government take action and reverse this action. The subsidy remover has been attempted by several administrations. It's not the first time. So when people say it's gone, it's gone. I don't think so. If nothing tangible is done, the action may go beyond organized labor. Don't forget, Nigerians are well uh, educated to the extent that they know their right. And when this is eating up the entire income of Nigeria, they may not even wait for NSC anymore. So the federal government should see this matter beyond labor. Labor is not the only one in the market. NSC, TUC members are not the ones suffering. In fact, these people I'm referring to, organized labor members are working. So to a reasonable extent, they can even afford to buy some of this product. But we talk about the that droning, the Nigerians themselves that would not even, have, they are not even enjoying anything as, as uh, you may call uh, basic need that government is making provision for uh, um, amenities like water and all the rest. Every household in Nigeria pay for their water, pay for their life, pay for everything, including contributing money to consult their road. So anything you have, you have any policy that will bring hardship to eat off their income becomes a threat that angers many to be on the street. So it's not about NSC now. NSC is trying to protect its own members from more or less spending on the, all their salaries on transport. Either you drive your car and buy fuel, or you go by public transport and uh, it's taking three to four, five hundred percent of what you used to spend. So what we have now is federal government to realize first that there is a challenge, even though president has made uh, made a declaration or rather a statement. How do we uh, resolve that very challenge on Nigerians? It's not something that will be done uh, with one statement. They need to go back. If uh, if he requires him to extend the subsidy, why he put up plans uh, to achieve... Because don't forget, as we speak now, fleet stations are selling over 500. So even when you command them to sell, as of yesterday, the, the queue has reduced. <laughs> because people are, not, people are scared to even enter. Because they don't have the money. So it's no longer scarcity. Is uh, scarcity of fund to afford that product, and which is very dangerous, very very dangerous. So for me, it's a very sensitive issue that require a second thought by federal government. Yeah, what if the federal government uh, says they have removed fuel subsidy, but they are giving palliatives, which a lot of people are also calling some kind of subsidy? Uh, you're spending money. Uh, because you have removed money from the system and all that. So what if that alternative of giving palliative is brought, but the, the fuel subsidy is not returned? Will NLC be comfortable with that? No, the, what we need to manage here, like you see, some of us who speak from the consultancy view, more or less giving advice to both parties. But what you should know is that when you are creating a palliative, if palliative is not purposeful, you are still wasting money in addition to the subsidy you eventually carry out. So when you say you want to carry out subsidy, how do you, are, there is, are you going to say you are making subsidy for 200 million Nigerians? How do you achieve it? We have tried it in the past. I was a member of the technical committee that we were uh, put in place in 2017 to work out palliative uh, measure. But the question is, that committee could not even have a solution for one year. So when you say you want to, if you, even though you bring that one trillion now as palliative, who will manage it? You are going to end up, you end up empowering few people. Palliative that is workable in Nigeria is palliative that is put in a product that people will eventually buy with their money. Not everybody need it at the quantity the other person may need it. And therefore palliative is put on PMS, leaving it for people to consume as demand. Uh, uh, tears on them. So I believe government insistence of, of removing subsidy without adequate plan to actually respond to Nigeria that yes, this is democracy and you are the reason we are here. If they don't do that, it will be a, a bad beginning. And I don't think uh, people will advise 
Mr. President to go in that order. I believe he's, uh, he's going to listen to his part view that, yes, you have made statement, but it seems something was not done first, which is the plan. The plan on subsidies should be removed with a gradual plan. As a matter of fact, I like his courage. He came to, to prove to Nigeria that we can start by removing. Yes, but he ought to have told Nigeria that, yes, we can no longer fund few people. We can no longer continue corruption. We can no longer allow subsidy in the hand of people. Let us divert this money into refinery working. Right? When people know that you are having plan to make refineries work, when people see a template that suggests that in the next six months, refineries will be in 50% capacity, that we address Nigeria challenge, I tell you, Nigerians will cooperate. Because even the subsidy is not benefiting us the way it should. We are wasting more money alongside. The trillions of dollars you hear every day, the billions of dollars you hear on this subsidy management is actually going to the hand of Nigerians. And they are scared to probe them because they don't also want to interrupt the, 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 the subsidy importation and all the rest. I think removal of subsidy is key, but that should not also bring endless suffering. If it's going to be temporary, we will even join federal government to advocate to Nigerians to bear it. It's temporary. Look at what happened in the monetary policy, policy of CBN. The, 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 the thought and the, the forecast did not work. Was it not reversed? Now that they said it will take effect in December, I am not sure it will not. Because up to now, no sensitization has gone to the rural area to address that. So if you come to December, you will receive more resistance than now because Nigeria believes it has come to stay. So that is what we have been suffering from this subsidy. Once you make a plan to replace existing plan, people will see it coming and they will wait for it. Let it be a temporary measure. But leaving it and see a loud dangote to determine price from July is uh, it's like removing it from the hand of 100 and something importers and putting it in the hand of dangote. It is neither here nor there, leaving the mountain to pitch on the floor. For us, uh, 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 as the community, we are not comfortable with the sharp remover with that adequate plan to actually uh, subdue the suffering. All right, that meeting that you had with the government, that NLC had with the government representatives and key stakeholders, ended in a deadlock. Uh, it's been postponed. Do we know when the next meeting will hold? Uh, they, they, they ended that meeting without uh, choosing uh, a time frame for the next meeting. And I think that, but I think the meeting is ongoing from the report we got last night. It's ongoing. They can reconvene even today. Nobody knows. You know, meetings with federal government, they already know. And because NSC, TUC have no deadline in terms of strike plan, uh, and, and, and the people should also know, and I like the fact that NSC cleared uh, yesterday that they had no plan to embark on strike. Because anybody who tells you that strike action is the immediate solution is also telling a lie. That means you are not a strategic leader. Strategic leaders will never engage in, in a protest when the action itself has not even affected Nigerians. Well, the, the, for people to even know that this challenge is not about NSC, NSC should even give up to two months for Nigerians to feel the pain and know whether it's NSC challenge or general problem. So for me, federal government will do everything possible to see a soft landing uh, solution with Congress. Because NSC, TUC seems to have a legitimate platform to carry out their resistive uh, measure anytime they want to refuse anti-people policy. But the question is, if you don't engage them right, if you don't treat them with respect, they will also feel intimidated. They will feel as if government is, is uh, imposing policy and uh, more or less that nothing can happen. Under democracy, the people have the right to accept your policy. The people have the right to express their feelings over any policy that has to do with the people. And I think the earlier they engage them further, better. And uh, more advice will go to federal government, I'm very sure. The next meeting, they shouldn't be coming to talk to NSC to see reason to remove of subsidy. Rather, they should be telling NSC what they have in place that will eventually cushion the effect of the remover. I am very sure engagement is the solution, but engagement with substance eventually will play the best deal. Yeah, in addition to what you're asking for, the NLC, the field station, I mean, the, 
the refinery is working. Is the NLC also um, asking about um, the subsidy that was paid for June? Because when the outgoing government cancelled, postponed the removal of subsidy, we were told that the subsidy uh, will end in June. And so here we are still in the month of June. The prices have gone up as if the products for June were not subsidized. And so one begins to wonder what happens to that money. Is that part of what the NLC is also seeking clarification for? What happens to the money? Is Nigeria not being shortchanged and Nigeria is not being shortchanged? No, maybe because uh, the way we see it, it will not be the way the marketers will see it. NLC may have that, asked that question. But uh, some of us that uh, study economics will also tell you that a businessman mind does not think in that order. You subsidize for me with the belief that I will go to the next market with the same plan of my purchase power. Now that you have removed subsidy, you have told me that the product I used to get S amount, I will be getting it S Y amount. If I don't increase price now, how do I gather money to buy product again? That is the marketer's view. Marketers are not seeing it that the product in their hand has been subsidized. They are saying, when I finish selling the subsidized product, how do I get the new market? And therefore, they want to increase price to be able to buy the next product. Otherwise, they will also be out of market. So everybody is selfish in trying to keep their business. All we are asking is we should be focused on uh, NSC should be focused on its demand. By the time you digress to begin to worry about this, this subsidy, we are in June and it will end in June. So it's immaterial, very insignificant to bother about what is happening in the market for, for this month because the reaction we see is normal everywhere. It's the speculation that determine that in fact that influence market forces. That is what is happening. The, 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 there, is a, there is there is there is already informed knowledge to the marketer that the price of their product will increase. The purchasing power has gone up. And therefore, if I don't sell it now, I will not buy again. Uh -huh. So that is what they are doing, to be able to raise money that will push them to get more product. So I don't think any, uh, labor should spend more energy in uh, asking questions that they know the answer may not even uh, be implemented. Yeah, but uh, just to follow up, when the airlines uh, put a price to what anybody can pay for internal flights or any other thing, uh, the NLC spoke up, even though they didn't go on strike or anything, but they spoke up and said that in a free economy, and uh, that kind of a thing should not be done. Fixed price for everybody uh, so that you cannot have alternatives. Everybody has to take that price if you want to travel within the country. Now that same thing was done by NNC, NNPCL, the fixed price in a free economy like this. And NLC, yes, spoke about it a little bit, but what is the level of engagement with this NMPCL uh, uh, over this issue of price fixing and all that? Or are you lumping, or is the NLC, TUC, lumping the federal government and an NNPCL together? Or are you engaging uh, them uh, separately? The, 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 the federal government is one, as far as the labor is concerned, but I know very well that the idea of fixing price is also an illegal act because how do you fix price for somebody that you are not in control of his market? How do you just come and tell all bakeries that bread should not be sold beyond 700 naira? Yeah, how can you control that? You must fix price where you have control in the business. And where you are not a participant in a business, you cannot also say you want to control price. And that is why we say, if you say you, have, you want to remove subsidy, you put a workable platform that will survive Nigerians. Then leave the market to drive. In fact, if there's no price competition, the price will not crash. We are in different sectors of the economy. And uh, what the airlines did was because it's a handful uh, operators where you just have about uh, 10 airlines or how many of them. So they can easily call, the CEOs can easily meet and say, well, let's do this. So your customer remain your customer. And my customer remain my customer. That was a private strategy against Nigerians. And because they know there will not be a collective decision by, uh, by passengers to also say, if you don't reduce price, we will not enter. 
if passengers have had that collective resolve, they would have also met. In fact, they would have they would have betrayed each other. But they did that in the aviation sector because they were very few. You can't do that in any other sector that uh, you have around the Tennessee state. But this one, you have few airports. Uh, you have many airports with few airlines. So these airlines owners can easily call themselves on phone and do a Zoom meeting to fix price against Nigerians. And that is why Labour and other Nigerians, even National Assembly, was against it. You cannot just fix a price. For what reason? It is not how APIs will get their product, that Arik will do, get their own. So prices in that sector can never be equal. We can't compare that with a subsidy because they are going to be importing at their own expense now. So if I import from a certain country, my charges may be different from the one that is coming from another country. We can't be the same. Some may buy from Dangote, and if the queue in buying from Dangote will take longer, somebody importing from outside may get quicker products. So that is to say the price will vary. But if we have it more in Nigeria, then people in Northern Zone should be buying products from the Northern Zone to avoid coming to South to buy. And then the cost of taking it to the North will freeze the price higher again. And that will begin another matter that uh, the, the, the high cost is because of the, the, the transporting it to the, to the needed place. I think a lot is needed uh, in the face of uh, the challenge we have to address this matter uh, and Nigerians will be satisfied. All right. I, I don't know. Do you, to what extent do you have information regarding the state of the refineries that we're talking about? The Port Harcourt, Kaduna, Wari. Uh, does Labour have any kind of, um, has Labour made any kind of inspection to know uh, the actual state of these refineries and um, if work is ongoing there to fix them? Yes, if we may not have done physical assessment, but the sector, the Nupeng and Pengas, from information through some of these our unions in those sectors, you will know that about one year ago, they were making an effort to see how, because the idea was to put them in place to enable them to remove subsidy. That was the Bwari administration plan. Unfortunately, they saw it not workable. Maybe the refineries were not ready. You know, when you abandon a facility for a long time and then coming to do overhauling in a hurry, eventually you may meet other challenges that you did not bargain for. So in doing so, I think it's costing them more in terms of time, in terms of resources, in terms of uh, technology to get it back without also shutting it down again. So you don't just tell Nigeria that a refinery has started. And then after two weeks, you are going on break to fix some other things again. I think they, 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 they were trying to escape from that accusation. But what they told us, if we, if we were to go by federal government plan, the refineries we have started, would have started by now. So when they even said December, Nigerians may not trust. Because this is not the first time they projected time for the refineries to kick off. So when you give time and you don't keep to it, when you give time again, doubt will come in. So now, Nigerians, I don't think Labour have a template to show that those refineries will start operation in any time soonest. Well, the, dilapidated state, the dilapidated state of the refineries, as you have uh, alluded to, and the lack of trust and transparency in, in the servicing of it, corruption and all that we know plays out in that sector, has also led to some people suggesting the outright sale of these refineries and um, private individuals coming in to sort this out as probably the only way we'll ever see light at the end of this tunnel. Do you, do you share that view? You know, why we don't share view of somebody running away from his duty? If you run away from your duty, you will lack capacity to even monitor that same function. And therefore, when somebody is, is responsible to play a role in a business, the, pop, the question is, what was the reason for government participation in sectors? It was to regulate price. That is why we tell government, you must come into mass transport so that when people want to take advantage of fuel hike to not double, double transportation, I'm giving an example. Mm. Government alternative become the solution to Nigeria. And when those private uh, 
uh, own, vehicle owners that want to exploit Nigerians see that government is constant with its price, they will reduce. So if government is absent in all our businesses just because they don't know how to manage it, then it shows incompetence and is, uh, is grossly unaccepted. So when we say we want to sell it, the, 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 you, you, you go to the reason. The reason is lack of skill to manage. Not the, the, the government participation should pay Nigeria better than any. But because we always give the right job to the wrong person, therefore we cannot get good results. And that is why we, you, 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 you see us paying salaries all of this time that the refinery has not worked. What happened to the staff? Hmm. Tell me, what are the workers in this refinery doing? For the past 20 years. Thank that you. tells you the corrupt country we have. A country whereby you have a certain number of workers that should be working in a refinery that will feed Nigeria. Refinery is 40. The workers are still there doing nothing. And then we have a national productivity center that has no interest in setting the productivity template for a nation. So where a country believes in we are spending too much, we, are, we don't base our expectation through productivity. And that is why our revenue don't grow. Why do we have different things in Lagos? Everything works. And they are trying to get it better. Why can't Nigeria also fix its own center to be electronic in some of this management and then you cut off corruption? They are very selective in deploying ICT to manage some of these things that will generate revenue. So what you see there in this sector is a deliberate plan to allow certain people make gain. Because people have asked this question repeatedly that in you saying you don't want to participate in this business. Giving it to who? Look at what happened in the pri privatization of power. See, today, government, the last time we met, that was last year. I, 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 mean, I don't want to quote the figure because I may not be totally accurate. But they mentioned several billions, if not up to a trillion, maybe 1.3 trillion. I, 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 subject to verification. That the further spent four years or so, in addition to having said you have let go a particular sector, yet we are making budget for them again. Who is corrupting who? So now, by the time you say you have removed subsidy, they will still look for something that they will set up another board that will be managing the sector, whether they are in line or not. And then they will make budget of billions of dollars again for that very board. You, you see Nigeria trying to create an official template to enhance corruption. It's unacceptable. An official template to enhance corruption. That brings me to my next question, which is, because this issue is dominating discourse nationally, it's affecting Nigerians in ways that words even uh, fail us to express. Um, if we're not going to keep going around vicious circle, is, is, is NLC also going to demand for a probe into how some of these failures have come about? into some of the corrupt practices that has led to the country being kept in this position? Is it part of what you're going to be uh, demanding? Probe and persecution of those found wanting? I think it should even be one of the agenda of Mr. President. Because when people try to... Don't forget, some persons, majority of Nigerians may not have believed in the capacity of the president uh, in power now. But from the step taken so far, and the people is trying to associate himself with, the, 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 the people is deploying to, to work closely to achieving his dream for the economy. People are beginning to say, yet they are waiting for court judgment. But for now, it seems he, he knows what he's here to do. So the question is, he should also take a step because now that he met with the chief, uh, security chiefs to say, go after those that want to hurt product or people that want to abuse, uh, take on, uh, on due advantage of my statement, the same thing can be done to, so that Nigeria will see him. So if, if for you to have suspended certain action, go, why is the refinery not even working till now? Why? Who made it so? So to prosecute them should be the act of government. And where that fail? NSC, organized labor, should also be, should also make it part of it. But why I don't want organized labor to actually dilute its struggle? Because when you begin to carry so many requests 
in trying to achieve one result. Mm. The federal government may be in a hurry to <clears throat> possibly stretch to promise you that eventually they are going to prosecute the people found wanting. And you cannot just prosecute until somebody is found guilty. Uh, or rather, you can't prosecute until you get the people uh, pointed out. So it's a, pro it's a process. So that process, federal government may eventually say, okay, you have to demand. Uh, let's go for the other one. The major one that, whoever that has a, a committed crime eventually will pay for it. But the one I think Nigerians want to hear is what happens to us. Because the issue of fear is not about car owner. It's about the life, living standard of all Nigerians. Whoever that says it does not concern me, I don't have a vehicle. You are even worse affected because he that does not have a vehicle will have no choice than to pay the price imposed on transportation by those people who want to exploit it. So I think part of their request would be that those people that have actually perfected corruption in Nigeria, that it has become a norm, that even going out of this country, we are dented. Those people should be seen face trial so that Nigeria will also have that lift of integrity that, yes, we are after those that are uh, blackmailing this country to uh, uh, honor. But by the time we accommodate, try to protect them, honestly, it doesn't give a safe landing for the economy integrity. Thank you so much, Mr. Amechi Asogoni, for your time and insight. Thank you. Mr. You. Amechi Asogoni is a former deputy president, NLC, and industrial relations expert. He's joined us to take a look at the field subsidy removal and how it's affecting Nigerians and how NLC is coming in to speak for Nigerians and seek for solution. Well, um, we're going to take a short break now. When we return, we know that tomorrow and on Sunday there will be matches. Uh, the Under-20 World Cup is going on. Israel, Brazil, Colombia, Italy, South Korea, Nigeria, USA and Uruguay will be competing in what is known as the quarterfinals. Let's see who will enter the semifinals and the finals. But for that, we'll have our sports pundit come and give us that after this break. Stay with us. <laughs> 